Good evening and welcome to Soundcheck Plus. About a year ago, um, the Malone Cyburn Band played a session for us in, in this very studio. This year, we have a solo set from Innis Cyburn, um, who many of you know will know from that band as being, and also as being one of the uh, sort of principal blues guitarists of, well, not just the Southwest, but I'd say a whole of the United Kingdom. <laughs> So we're lucky enough tonight to have a, uh, a full set, a solo set from, from Innis. Over to you.
<laughs> there you go. Thank you. That was two tunes that I wrote for uh, for tonight, and uh, the first one is called Twenty Twenty Vision, um, and it really describes this year. It's about uh, 2020 is a bit, bit of a strange year for us. The second one was called Mahalia, and it's from Mahalia Jackson. There we go. Uh, 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 uh. So uh, thank you very much to Phil and Mags for inviting us, inviting me to, uh, to, to play again. And it's a real pleasure to be here. And I'm going to carry on playing for you a little bit of uh, acoustic stuff. For what is I feel? What you did, well, you can call it what you want. I call it messing with the kids. You took the kids' car, you drove it all around town. Tell everybody, you're gonna put me down. But hey, look at what you did. Well, you can call it what you want. I call it messing with the kid Buddy guy messing with the kid, um, or people that 
Uh, first time I heard it was Rory Gallagher, uh, live in Europe. And uh, what can you say? Uh, we all love Rory, don't we? Here's a song um, I, uh, I first heard it from uh, Johnny Guitar Watson. This one's called I Was Looking Back to See If She Was Looking Back to See If I Was Looking Back at Her. I was walking down the street, the pretty girl that I meet. She was looking all so sweet, like an angel from her head to her feet. I was looking back to see if she was looking back to see if I was looking back at her. She with such a fabulous smile, she must have been a beautiful child. That girl was neat, an angel from head to feet. I was looking back to see if she was looking back to see if I was looking back at her. Pretty good that I mean She was looking oh so sweet Like an angel head to feet I was looking back to see if she was looking back to see if I was looking back at her Globe such a fabulous smile Lord she must have been a beautiful child Her head was so sweet An angel down from head to feet I was looking back to see if she was about to see if I was looking back at it. Woo! Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've got to say thank you to Phil and Mags in there because they're giving me a nice little bit of a, a, a clap in there for... Here's a song that I remember when I was a kid. I used to um, go to the record shop and I used to buy records just by looking at the cover and thinking, this looks cool. This looks cool. And the first time I heard this song was by the Jackson 5, and I love the Jackson 5 version. And then I saw a record in the record shop. It's called What Stacks. It had Albert King on it. And I loved Albert King. And uh, I thought, I'm going to buy this. It's a double album. It took a couple of weeks of paper round money, and I bought it. And the most amazing version of Ain't No Sunshine on there by Isaac Hayes. And so I'm going to just do my little version. Um, <laughs> Only darkness all around And this house just ain't a home This time when she's gone And this is time she's gone for long There ain't no sunshine when she's gone And this house just ain't no home Any time she goes away That little thing alone Cause ain't no sunshine When she Thank you. 
time where she's gone Sunshine when she's gone, and this house just ain't no more. Anytime Darkness all around Ain't no sunshine when she's gone And this house just is no home And it's hot sunshine <laughs> uh, you're very kind very kind thank you I'm going to play another song for you it's a bit of another weepy one but uh, I love this one it was, uh, I first heard it by uh, Adobe Gray it's called uh, We Had It All it goes like this Blowing through my mind Just the way it used to sound Through the Georgia pines You were there to answer When I called You and me, Lord knows we had Remember how I used to stroke your hair While reaching for the feeling That was always there You were the best thing in my life I can recall You and me, Lord knows We had it all And I know that we will never live those times again So I let my dreams take me back to where I came And I stay here with you girl just as long as I can Oh, it was so good Oh, 
it was so good Oh, it was so good When I was your man Stop believing in your smile Even though you didn't stay It was all worthwhile You were the best thing in my life I can't recall You and me like the God knows we had it all There you go, we had it all <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you I'm going to take you right back to uh, the guy that made me uh, give up wanting to be a professional footballer and made me want to be a guitar player really this is a guy that I heard on the radio when I was about 12 years old. His name is B.B. King.
gospel I'm free, 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 free Free from your spirit Now that it's all over All I can do is wish you Now that it's all over, all I can do is wish. Now it's all over, baby. All I can do is wish. Now that it's all over, all I can do is wish you were. B.B. King, so <laughs> thank you so much, thank you. I hope you all out in there in uh, internet land are having, having fun, I hope you're having a nice cup of tea and sitting back and enjoying it and um gonna continue on with uh, another another little bit of blues for you and the this one's a little bit of a miserable song but my, i guess most blues songs are pretty miserable
I would rather see you, baby Sleeping in the ground I would rather see you, baby Sleeping in the ground Yeah, to be around here with you, darling Lord, you gonna put me down <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you can probably guess, I'm using a looper here and um, playing to uh, myself from stuff I've recorded and... Um, so I've got myself as my own little band in a box. Um, gonna have a little bash at a gospel thing now that um, I first heard by O.V. Wright and I've always loved this song. <laughs> I will be done with the troubles of this world The troubles of this world The troubles of this world Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world I'm going home to live with God There ain't gonna be no more fighting over there ain't gonna be no more fighting, killing over there. There ain't gonna be no more fighting over there. I'm going home to live with God. My mother over there. Soon I will be seeing my darling mother over there. Soon I will be with my mother over there. I'm going home to live with God.
I will be with The troubles of this world With the troubles of this world With the troubles of this world Soon I will be done With the troubles of this world I'm going home To live with God I'm going home to live with God I'm going home to live with God up my dying bed, Jesus. Make up my dying bed. I'm going home. That's a bit of a miserable old song, but I love it anyway. Here's, uh, here's something from, uh, again, from, uh, I think from Buddy Guy and uh, Junior Wells. It goes like this anyway. It's, uh Gotta help me, baby. I can't do it by myself. You gotta help me. I can't do it by myself. If you don't help me, I gotta find somebody else. I might have to cook, I might have to sew, might have to wash. Sweet that flaw, but you gotta help me. I can't do it by myself. If you don't help me, I gotta find somebody else. All right. Baby, put on your morning gown 
Come on, baby, put on your morning gown. Well, I don't feel tired, but I sure feel like lying down. You gotta help me. I can't do it all by myself. You gotta help me, baby. I can't do it by myself. If you don't help me, gotta find somebody else. Talking so much Honey hush Because you're talking so much Just listen to your conversation Just about to separate us Talking so much Oh honey hush You know you're talking too much Just this to your conversation Just about to separate us You start talking in the morning You talk all night long I haven't figured out Just what I've done wrong Your conversation, baby, just about to separate us. I cook my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I do it all the time. I haven't figured out, baby, what I've done wrong because you're talking so much. Just listen to your conversation, just about to separate Come here, baby. Talk so much. You know you're talking so much. You just listen to your conversation. Just about to separate us. That's a honey hush. <laughs> honey hush, you talk so much. Well, well, well. <laughs>
me, baby, what's on your worry mind? Tell me, baby, what's on your worry mind? Well, I hate to see you crying all the time. Well, I can't help but feel so bad for you. Yeah, I can't help but feel so sad for you. Well, for something, anything I can do. Tell me, baby, what's on your troubled mind? Now tell me, honey, what's on your troubled mind? Well, I hate to see you crying all the time. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a worried mind, Blues. And uh, this one's a... Uh, uh, Song I want to dedicate to uh, some of my friends. Uh, uh, I've, I wrote this song a long time ago, but I wrote this song for my daughter Amy, and it's about being homesick, and it's called uh, Fisherman's Wharf. And um, if you've ever been away from home for a long time and you miss one of your children, then y you're going to know what this song's about. So this is for Amy and. And I'm going to tune up. Because I've been hitting this guitar quite hard here. So it's about time I gave her some love and attention. Ooh. My G string. Was loose. Have mercy. People, you don't want a loose G string. So this is for my for my beautiful Amy, and I wrote this when she was three years old, and it's called Fisherman's Wharf. to feel alive again Down on Fisher's Wheel Let me refill that warm sea air And hear you laugh and talk It reminds me of yesterday Innocence gone by How I love to hear your smiling voice There's no reason now to cry The stairwell has eased the pain and watch the ships as they come sailing in And listen to the buskers sing Down on Fisherman's Wall
Did I tell you that I miss my home? The things that I used to do Sunday mornings in the park Drive Let me bear my soul Let me show you how I feel It's good to feel alive again Makes me feel so real Let's stay a while Let's ease the pain Watch the ships as they come sailing in And listen to the buskers sing Fisherman's Wharf there for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I hope you're all having fun out there in internet land and uh, enjoying yourselves. And uh, I want to play a song for John Lennon. And I hope you enjoy it. Imagine there's no heaven. No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people It isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for Did you hear me Trump? No religion too Imagine all the people 
living life You may say I'm a dreamer Lord, but I'm not the only one Maybe someday you'll come and join us And the world will live as one Imagine all the people Living life in peace You may say I'm a dreamer No But I'm not Hope someday you'll come and join us And the world we're living in Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that up there, Mr. Lennon, 80 years old now. Wow. gonna leave me, I would feel my blood turn cold. Round about midnight, honey, that's when I get my thrill. Round 
about midnight, baby, just when I get my thrill. If I thought you was gonna leave me, baby, I'd feel my blood turn chill. Love is real. I can feel it in my soul. Your love is real, man. I can feel it in my soul. If I thought you was gonna leave me, I could feel my blood turn cold. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There's a beautiful little blues number by Robert Ward, and uh, I love Robert Ward. I'm going to do a little thing, another little blues thing for you. It's called Ain't Nobody's Business, and it uh, goes like this. Fuss and fight in the next day. Everything gonna be alright. Ain't nobody's business. Ain't nobody's business. If we do. One day, Lord, we have ham and bacon. Next day, ain't nothing shaking. But ain't nobody's business. Ain't nobody's business. What we do.
Bobby Says she ain't got no money I say, well, come over here Take all of mine, honey But ain't nobody's business Ain't nobody's business If I do Lord, it ain't nobody's business Ain't nobody's business what I do If I do <laughs> the last time I played here, and uh, it was a beautiful thing. I played here with Marcus Malone. We we played Malone Cybern, and it was before um, COVID and uh, all the world, whole world changed. And it was so lovely because Phil and Mags had us here. And um, my best friend, not my best friend, my friend Steve was playing bass. And um, since then, I'm afraid. Uh, he's passed away, and it's it's real. Um, I don't know what to say really. And um, so the best way to say it is in music. And I've written this little thing. And it's called "My Friend Steve." It's the best way to pay tribute to Steve.
Thank you. That's for Steve. Uh, I'm going to play a song that we used to play a, long t a lot when Steve was in my band. This goes out from my friend Scott. This is from Otis Rush. This is called It Takes Time. It goes like this. The big drums try the small one fades away. The big one lives, but the small one goes away. But hey, yeah. You know what it means to be alone. Today you're laughing, tomorrow you could be crying. Thank you very much, everybody, um, and in internet land out there, and um, sitting on your sofas or in whatever you're doing, having your cup of tea or your pint of Stella or whatever, uh, smoking your your fun cigarettes. And I'd just like to say thank you to Phil and Mags for having me here. And um, I just hope this COVID thing goes away very soon, and we can be out doing proper gigs, and I won't have to rely on this little red pedal here that. Um, I keep on uh, hitting with the wrong foot. Um, talking a little red pedals before I go, I'd just like to say a big thank you to uh, the uh, people at Audio Sprocket, Tone Dexter. I know it sounds like a bit of a, an advert, but I'm using their fantastic acoustic modeling pedal. And um, I just want to say thank you because I love it so much. I'd like to leave you with another Otis Rush song, and this one's called Double Trouble. And um, uh, it goes like this.
I lay awake at night, I can't sleep. No, I'm in trouble. Bad luck is killing me. I can't get a job. Hey, people tell me. Some of my generation are millionaires, but it's hard for me to keep a decent close to it. Your love's got me walking, babe. I have no place to go. Bad luck and trouble's killing me. People tell me you can't make it if you try. Some of my generation's millionaires, but it's hard for me to keep it decent close. Hard for me to keep decent clothes to wear.
Okay, thank you, thank you, and good night. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you've been watching Soundcheck Plus with a live performance from Innes Seiben. Innes, I would clap, but I've got hands covered with microphones and bits of stuff. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to clapping anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're going to have to hold the microphone. Okay, yeah, yep, that's better. Yep, right. Okay, yep. Okay, so Innes, I thought it'd be a good idea just to have a, a chat after sure. your fantastic sort of set there. Thank you. Um, Thank and you. I'd just like to say what a lovely tribute to Steve Hall. Oh. Uh, lovely song and a great guy, sorely missed. Oh, man, it was such a shock. Um, I just still can't believe he's gone every time I'm... I don't get many gigs coming in at the moment, but every time something, you know, comes in and I think, oh, somebody's asking for a gig, our phone's... Oh, no, I can't. Mm. So I was saying, oh, yeah. I'll phone Steve. I can't. And things like, I've just been like looking through our email trail from the last time we played here and and uh, every, you know, you see Steve's... But, but he lives on in his music yeah. and, you know... Um, yeah, I mean, um, Steve played when you were here with um, with Malone Sybin. Yeah. And he played here with the LM Project. Yes, yeah. Uh, a couple of times as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Steve was, <laughs> Steve was a great guy. He was an amazing musician, but more than that, he was an amazing human being. Yeah. He was fantastic, very, one of the kindest people I ever had the honour of knowing. So, you know, I don't want to start gushing and, no, and, and but crying and... But, uh, but you know, it's it was a lovely song, and oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. Well, it was it's one of those things. Uh, you know, um, uh, we were going to do. We were um, doing. We had a what do you call it? Um, a tribute gig for him, um, and it got cancelled at the last minute. And I was when I got the the, the text, I had the guitar in my hands, and and it mm. just wrote. It just came out of the guitar. Yeah. Um, so it was Steve, you know, coming out of the guitar. So yeah. <laughs> it is. We first met each other a long, 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 long time ago, <laughs> back in Devizes, when we, we were long-haired layabouts, yeah, I hanging about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've lost mine. Uh, no, I'm still a layabout. <laughs> <laughs> and even in those days, back, I know, I guess you were probably about 17, something like that in those yeah, days, back yeah. in the 70s. Yeah. Um, everybody in town knew that you were the guy, you were the guitarist. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, you might not have known, but everybody uh, else um, was, seemed to. I was hoping I would play for West Ham United I, was <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they had any guitarists <laughs> but um, and you said when you were um, doing the set that yeah. I think it was B.B. King yes. that kind of like you know uh, you heard it and that's what inspired you to kind of get out and sort of grab a guitar exactly it was hearing B.B. King on the radio and it was just like a shot from like an arrow being shot from heaven it was kind of one of those epiphany moments um, I was like a, you know, like I think about 12 years old, crazy about football and running and whatever, and wasn't in the slightest bit interested in music at all. And here in, I think it was Sweet 16, that was like, it's really strange for a kid in Devizes at mm. 12 years old to hear that and suddenly go, oh my goodness me, where did that come from? Mm. But, and, and I'm still searching for it and it, uh, you know, I listen to BB King nearly every day still. Yeah. You know, um, and it's led me on this long journey that I'm still on. So thank you, <laughs> Mr. Riley B. King. <laughs> <laughs> so did you kind of have? Did, are you self-taught? As well, yeah, I'm totally to. self-taught. Um, I got into so many bad habits when I very first started playing. The, you know, we were up at the thumb rounds and um, listening to records. Really, you know. Um, B.B. King was my first teacher, I think, because mm. I listened to Live at the Regal until my parents probably were, you know, so sick of hearing it. And um, I, I went on and then to listen to Otis Rush and people like that. And this was when, you know, in the days when we were young, yeah. before the internet, where yeah. you went to the record shop to oh, find, yeah. you know, you yeah. didn't, you couldn't Google things or whatever. So mm. it was, um, it was such a wonderful journey and it still is really, you know, yeah. still discovering people. Yeah, I mean, you were saying, I think, in in the set um, about going to record shops and you're kind of looking through the covers yeah. and you know, yeah. and it's that kind of like thrill of, of kind of discovery yes. that yeah. uh, in some respects is just lost because yes. there's no need to. You know? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, though, all the time, I, I think of things like um, Donny Hathaway Live, um, 
uh, Ray Charles live at Newport um, albums like that where I'd be go I'd go through all you'd go through all the like the new Seekers and <laughs> the ABBA and all of a sudden you Donny Hathaway live that is so cool yeah. I don't know what it sounds like yeah. but I'm buying it yeah yeah and you take it home and then you would because you would only have you know one one or two records you would devour it mm. it's not like you know you can listen to a snip of something on Spotify, and then you can listen to a million other songs. But yeah. in those days, so you devoured it, and and you listened to it, and you you'd listen to a whole side at least. Oh, exactly, you it wasn't just it. picking out a song. Yeah, exactly. And and I think as a guitar player, and as probably as as a lot of other guitar players and and, and musicians of that age, uh, or you know, brought up in that time, mm. we. Um, infused it it kind of became part of our dna because it i mean i used to wake up in the morning and the first thing i would do would be look at my guitar and mm. look at the records you know mm. and so it became part of us i think more mm. so uh, it's so much easier now you can look on youtube and you can learn how to play Jimi hendrix's best you know most difficult songs and stuff but you know, yeah. um, people in my age, we had to work it out. We had to yeah. sit and listen to that bloody record for <laughs> hour after hour after hour. <laughs> yeah, and try yeah. and figure out how did he get that tone? Yeah, is it the amp? Is yeah. it the guitar? Is it the? It's the fingers usually, it's isn't it? Usually the fingers, and yeah. Um, yeah, I mean a lot of that. And and I think um, I don't know about other people, but especially with me, I would kind of work in trying to work out Albert King or trying to work out. Jimi Hendrix I would get it about 80% right mm. and then that would kind of be part of my DNA so that would go into my style so um, people like Santana Carlos Santana mm. um, of course Jimmy Page people, those mm. guitar players I couldn't quite get get it right 100% I'm not one of these people that can play 100% but I'd get the basic gist of it and then that would sort of soak into the way I play now I guess yeah, yeah. Um, so they were in devices, BB King, basically self teach yourself yeah. the guitar and um and the blues. Yeah. And a lot of that uh, a lot of the things that go along with that is uh is the I don't want to call it like the history of the blues, but it's the culture of the blues. Yeah. That you know, the you know, the Robert Johnsons and all the rest of it that sort of like comes along with that. Yeah, yeah. Um and then you formed a band of some sort For, yeah i mean <laughs> I, I i would just get into i was in school bands you know it devises yeah. comprehensive we i can remember we used to rehearse on the the stage in the mm. uh where we had assemblies and i would be in any band that would take me punk bands jazz bands folk bands reggae bands anything anybody um raz hopkins and phil newman you know who were, were, were probably younger than i am now mm. But they they took pity on this young youngster, mm -hmm. and um, you know you can come and play gigs with us, and I would make a real pig's ear of it. But every time I made a pig's ear of it, I learned a bit more, and I learned a bit more. Mm. And um, I think you know the way to learn really is to get up and play with other people. It's how you mm. learn how to be in time, and how. Uh, you know, in time playing, I mean, not turn up on time, but um, <laughs> yeah, well, that helps. <laughs> but that helps as well, because yeah, you don't get asked again if you're late. But um, um, yeah, I think just that desire to just want to play, and it's still with me, you know. Mm. And I don't think it'll ever go away. Yeah. Um, and uh, I remember probably ten or fifteen years later, um, yeah. that would have been the Innis Cybum Blues Explosion, yeah, that kind yeah. of period. Um, and and then it has to be mentioned, but for a, a relatively short period out of your entire kind of like life, yeah. then around 93, I think it was, yeah. you uh, toured with Robert Plant. I did. I was very, very lucky um, to be to be asked to, to join his band and spent, um, yeah, 93 and early 94 um, in America and South America and... Um, mm. That's a big jump, though, from in terms of scale of gigs. <laughs> it was it was bizarre. It was yeah. really um, looking back on it. I was so naive and so uh, um, I don't know I, I, because I was just in awe, you know, of Robert. And Robert is such a lovely person, and mm. and um, he gave me the chance to 
to play and, and playing all those Led Zeppelin songs. That was one of the things I was going to ask you about. Yeah. That must have been weird, playing those iconic Zeppelin songs oh. in front of massive crowds. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in the States and South America and what have you. Absolutely. Because every guitar player's dream, really, yeah. to be honest, you know, and I would pinch myself some nights and think, what the hell am I doing here? You yeah. Because yeah. I had a look at the set list from yeah. some of those gigs oh, yeah. um, a couple of days ago. And there were things like um, you know, Whole Lot of Love, obviously. Yes. You know, Trampled yeah. Underfoot. I think yeah. Kashmir was played on that. Oh, I don't, I don't remember playing Kashmir, but um, right. we, we did a lot of stuff from Zeppelin 2. And, and, yeah. Um, and then quite a lot of sort of... Uh, uh, covers as well. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, I say quite a lot. I mean, if you look at the entirety of yeah. the set list, because it yeah. covers the whole period, things like Moby, I forgot it's called Moby Grape, isn't uh, it? Uh, oh, um, there was a band called Moby Grape, yeah, yeah and we we did um, Robert's really into the, the West Coast sort of thing. Um, yeah. I, I recorded um, with Robert a, a song called Little Hands, which mm. was written by Skip. Um, uh, it's not Skip James, Skip Skippy from from Moby Grape, who we a we actually met him in San Francisco. Um, mm. But I mean, what I learned uh, from Robert was um, a lot about music, um, from Appalachian sort of mountain music mm. to, to Motown to Stax to fifties mm. bubblegum pop to really obscure blues um, songs. Uh, he knows his music. He, yeah. you know, he, he's he's a musicologist, um, and and I learnt a lot of different mm. kind and a lot about music from from him. And I for that I'm always going to be grateful to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the uh, things I was going to, I suppose, ask you about was yeah. you must have dreaded the possibility <laughs> of having to play Stairway to Heaven, but I understand <laughs> it. He doesn't do it anymore. Yeah, I. Uh, well, <laughs> it's funny because you know, um, I used to we used to do um, uh, a, Bluff, a Buffalo Springfield song called Bluebird, um, and that was just me on acoustic and Robert on um, sing on vocals. And sometimes I used to have this almost terrible urge just to start playing the first few chords, <laughs> just to see what would happen. It was almost you P45 know forty five probably <laughs> and exactly. And I knew I knew I'd be straight on the straight straight on the plane next morning. Yeah, but I'd be fighting this urge to start playing you know the first few chords. But um, it's, um, of course I never did. No. But, um, yeah. Um, I mean, I saw, um, this was many, many years later, but just coming back on the uh, kind of Robert Plant's eclectic taste. Yes. I saw him doing some live show on TV. I don't know how long ago it was, but several years ago. And I thought, yeah, I kind of know what we're going to get, but yeah. I'll watch it anyway. And I was totally wrong, yeah. completely yeah. wrong. It was nothing like what I expected at all. No, I know what you mean. So, um <clears throat> yeah, I guess that kind of eclectic. Yeah, because he's um, searching. You know, he's still yeah. searching. He he goes. I mean, he he's very very into Middle Eastern music, into Arabic music yeah. and Sufi music, and um, you know, which is incredible because for somebody that like Robert, who could just rest on his laurels and just go out and do Led Zeppelin stuff, um, and he's searching, 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 and finding new bands. Mm. And I remember when we would be, you know, on tour somewhere, he'd be off. He'd be off shopping to. Um, he'd have to wrap his hair up in a hat so he didn't get recognised. And he'd come back backstage before we went on, and he'd have all these records. Say, look, guys, look what I found! I found this really obscure Skip James record, or I've mm. I found this really obscure Doors bootleg. And mm. like a twelve-year-old, like I was when I was twelve, and I was he yeah. was so into the music, you know. Yeah. So that's something that is, you know, that's great. I think. Yeah. So moving on from that. <clears throat> yeah. Over the last God knows how many years, you've been pretty much touring in one sort of band yeah. or one format or another. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think when we were talking kind of like last year um, with Malone Sybin, yeah. you were... I think you were going over to, was it Transylvania for the Transylvanian uh, Blues yes. Festival? Yeah, we've done it twice actually now. Right. Yeah. So is blues really big in, in the kind of Eastern European countries? It is, it, is, it really is. Um, the, in fact, the last gig that Marcus and I did together was in um, Macedonia mm. um, a couple of months ago. 
Um, yeah, East Europe, Eastern Europe is great. Russia, I've been to Russia three times, um, played with some amazing Russian musicians. Yeah. Uh, Latvia, uh, the, the bands that I play with in Latvia are incredible. The standard of musicianship is wonderful. Um, yeah, we play a lot in Poland and Lithuania and... Um, I think it's kind of slightly surprising given the roots of blues being, yeah. you know, American effectively. Yeah. Um, that, you know, the Eastern European bloc sort of loves it. <laughs> yeah, I think um, um, uh, uh, my, the promoter that, uh, in, in Moscow is a guy called Boris Litvinsev, who's a lovely guy, and he, he gets lots of UK artists over to mm. play. And his take on it is that... Um, under communism, uh, they weren't allowed to listen to the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin and uh, the Beatles. And um, so as soon as they were allowed to listen to it... Um, Floodgates opened. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and sometimes, you know, I see some of those, some of the older people in the audience and they, they are literally in tears mm. because I think they never thought that they would see either American or UK artists going over there and and being allowed to play mm. blues or and rock music um and it's a real privilege to sort of mm. go over there and and play to some of the these people you know and oh, oh they they're so lovely over there they um the first time i played in russia the moscow blues appreciation society presented me with um with this wall hanging sort of thing <laughs> and, 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 and all these presents. And, it, you know, it was just, it was just beautiful, you yeah. know, and it make, makes it so worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we went to Moscow um, on a holiday a few years ago yeah. over New Year. And it's a weird place, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a place where you can't even take in the names of the roads or the, you know, tube stations yes. because it's Cyrillic and it yes. just doesn't, feature yeah um so yeah. you know it's at least when i'm in paris or something like that you know you can kind of get a rough idea of what yeah. you think it you know somewhere sounds like but it's just i've no idea i know um that that's where i'm lucky is because you know um boris takes me to all the gigs and but mm. if i if i would let i mean i get lost in bath so uh <laughs> leaving me in the middle of moscow is i'd, I'd never be fat seen again that would be the end that would be it <laughs> speaking of places that are really keen on the blues stuff yeah. um your hometown devises yeah. as was they seem to be a very strong sort of blues town in in this neck of the woods Definitely. with the uh, the blues club that's over there yeah um and um, there are pockets around the kind of like the southwest and, and into Wales as well. Yeah. Which have just seem to have really sort of like strong blues followings. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's strange, isn't it? It devises the hoax. Yeah. The, I mean, that, that was one of the, the greatest blues bands ever to come out of this country. Mm. Um, I play with John... Amor quite a lot um, and every now and again when Robin comes over I, I play with but those guys were phenomenal mm. what a fantastic band um, I don't know where it comes from it's really strange mm. isn't it um, yeah. that it's almost I don't know I think some people say it's almost like um, it's because of the romanticism of of the blues and I remember the first time I went to America which was when I was in Robert's band was just even being just seeing signposts for Chicago yeah. was for me was like oh I've met you know it, or walking into Antone's Blues Club in Austin Texas or mm. um, just go you know being in New Orleans um, for for me was just like mm. a, a being a kid at Christmas time you know? yeah because <laughs> you you've played with some of the um, some of the greats you know you've jammed with. Well, you list them. <laughs> well, I, I, I was lucky because um, after shows, um, we would sometimes go to blues clubs and whatever. And because yeah. people would say, oh, that's Robert Plant's guitar player, then I was lucky enough to, to get up mm. and play with people. So, uh, uh, you know, I played with some, some great old, well, and new, new mm. people, you know, from James Cotton and Buddy Guy to um, uh, Chris Duarte and... Um, uh, oh, so many great mm. players. I mean, the U.S. is just overflowing with talent, mm. with 
hugely gifted guitar players. And I guess you just learn from each one, totally. just absorb things. Absolutely. Again, like you were saying earlier, which then just kind of embeds itself into your own yeah. style. I think it is it symbiosis, is that the word? Yeah, yeah. Um, and also because I think I, I listen to lots of different kinds of music and so... Um, you know, I listen to a lot of soul music, so I listen to Cornell mm. Dupree and guitar, or, and the guitar players that play on the Motown records, and I uh, pinch things from them. Yeah, and uh, I listen. I love listening to acoustic music, to folk music, and uh, mm. so uh, you know, steal from the best. Yeah, <laughs> well, why not? Yeah, but that does lead me nicely into yeah. uh, the next thing I was going to sort of chat to you about. Yeah, um, and before we were recording this, we we're talking about. Um, the new music that our kids kind of like put us yeah, on to. Yeah. But I was wondering what kind of stuff do you listen to? You know, you're in the car, yeah. and you, you know, you listen to anything that you like really. Yeah. What sort of stuff do you listen to for fun? Um, well, in the, coming over in the car, I've got the average white band on. Um, mm. But um, yeah, I, I, I clean the, the CDs. I've still listened to CDs in the car, so I'm old fashioned. Uh, the other day it, it, I had to clean them out. So I'm just trying to think what was in there. There's the White Album by the Beatles, um, a couple of several Otis Rush albums, um, Crown Bin, um, mm. oh, uh, uh, Millie Jackson, um, Aretha Franklin, um, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. There's always Stevie Wonder and Donny Hathaway on the go. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because I have I talk to people about you know the kind of stuff they listen to yeah. when we're doing things like this. Yeah. And often. It, it really surprises me because it's nothing like what those people are yeah. kind of known for. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's often sort of something totally different that I didn't see coming at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember reading an interview um, once years ago with Tony Iommi from from Black Sabbath who yeah. said that he used to love listening to, to Frank Sinatra and the Carpenters. and. Mm. Oh, I love the Carpenters. Uh, oh, God, I love the Carpenters. Yeah. Uh, Karen Carpenter's voice, yeah. beautiful. Magic. Um, but I do I do listen to a lot of that kind of music. Mm. Um, I listen to a lot of um, well, sort of folky stuff or, um, for want of a better word, world music, you know, yeah. um, music from different cultures and whatever. Um, um, I just think um, I listen to quite a lot of jazz as well. Mm. Um uh, I think it was Louis Armstrong said there's two kinds of music, good music and bad music. So mm. I listen to Chopin, I listen to Mozart. Um, yeah. I, li I listen to, still listen to Black Sabbath. Yeah. Like, you know. Do you find yourself still listening to um, to a, a, a guitarist and thinking, how the hell did you do that? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you listen to somebody like Derek Trucks, the slide guitarist. Mm. Um, uh and, and, and just think, it's it's more sort of like, where did that come from? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so many players like that, and it's in the old days. I guess I would have thought, right, I'm going to try and learn how to do that. And now mm. I'm sort of happy with where I am. I just think, God, that's just beautiful. I just mm. listen to that. I mean, Django Reinhardt is the mm. the perfect example. Uh, I listen to a lot of Django. Um, I remember as a kid reading about him i think in a history book or something mm. or um getting hold of an album and thinking oh this isn't going to be very good he only could only play with two fingers and mm. then putting it on how the yeah. hell did he play that and i still um and funnily enough i was i was saying to somebody the other day the one person that always puts a smile on my face is django when i listen to django because mm. there's always he'll play something and you and you'll just go like you just said, how the hell did he play that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so today we've got the solo in this. Yeah. Um, and it's a kind of like a, a sort of raw, a stripped back acoustic kind of blues. Yeah. But you've come armed with the technology. <laughs> I you, wish. Men you mentioned some of it a little bit earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I know there will be some gearheads out there that are yeah. thinking, what was he talking about when he's talking about you know the looper and the and yeah. the um, the other pedal? Okay. So um, the two main pieces of kit that you've got here yeah. today probably are the the um, I forgot what it's called. Is it Dexter? Oh, the, the, the Tone Dexter. Tone Dexter. Yeah. The, it's made by Audio um, Audio Sprockets, and it's uh, I, I don't know how I never heard of it before. Um, 
even I mean I've got this beautiful Taylor guitar, but even playing live through through a PA, you can still hear it's a piezo pickup. It's mm. what this this beautiful pedal here does is you plug a microphone into it, and for a couple of minutes you strum away, and the microphone learns the sound of the guitar, and then you plug the pedal in, and mm. it sounds like you're being mic'd up. Um, so basically, it models the sound of like a high quality microphone in a studio yes. that you can then take anywhere you like yes. effectively. Yeah. In so in other words, you can plug plug that into either to a, an acoustic amp or like we've done today yeah. in, into your, your your audio system. And that is the sound of, of the guitar being mm-hmm. mic'd up, but you don't have to worry about micing it up. It's, uh, you know, I'm not uh, one really for, for being into lots of gear, but this is the one piece, one pedal that I just mm. think... How did I live without it before? Yeah. Uh, and you've got another um, looper gadget, which... Yeah. Um, <laughs> which you, I'm still you, learning. You're still learning. <laughs> 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 um, but, again, as we were talking earlier, loopers can be the kiss of death. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a case of getting the sort of like the timing right, or as, as you say, it comes back round again and... Yep. And you're, <laughs> and you're, you're a microsecond out. Or, as I did earlier... It moved, and I couldn't reach it with my foot. <laughs> or um, uh, when you're you're looking at the microphone and singing, and then you suddenly say, "Oh, it, mm. you've got to press it at exactly the right second." So that, that's an art to it. It's like mm. another musical instrument, really. Uh, I was talking to um, a sort of folk uh, singer guitarist Ange Hardy um, yeah. a couple of years back, and she uses um, a looper for all of her live stuff. Yeah, and she was talking about you know. You, you set the loops up and then you layer them on top. Yes. But sometimes when you're out and about like they, doing a festival or something, the thing that you can't anticipate is a tractor <laughs> driving behind you at exactly the, you know, <laughs> sort of not that far away in a field. <laughs> oh, pretty, or an aeroplane. <laughs> or an aeroplane, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that. <laughs> that's the beauty of live music. It, it is, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we also said that um, last year it was... You were here as Malone Cybern, yeah, and obviously, the world is in a crisis at the moment. Oh boy, yeah, it's changed. So, um, but presumably, Malone Cybern is kind of like you know going to come out the other end of this yeah. with gigs and other stuff. We're halfway through a new album. Um, we've been remotely recording uh, the, the, uh, a new album, and it's come not really through having to make an album. It's come because we want. We were bored and we wanted to do something. Mm. Um, and it's the u- usual thing is that we all turn up at the studio and, and the baffle off the drums and we all play live and mm. two days later we've got a record. This way, um, it started off on my computer with drum machine and I've played the bass and then I've sent it to Marcus. Marcus has written the words, written the melodies, sent it back. Then I've sent it without the drum machine to the drummer and um, Kevo Rourke, and he's taken it to his studio in his shed, and he's mm. played the drums, which sound absolutely amazing. Mm. And then we send it off to the bass player; he does his part. Then it comes back. Then I redo the guitars, and then Marcus does all his vocals and harmonies. And mm. it's we've got nearly half, well, we've got over half an album recorded. Mm. And I can't believe how good it sounds for for the fact that none of us were in the same room when yeah. Uh, well, I was going to say, for one, for doing an album, mm. you would normally expect a load of rehearsal. Yes, yeah. And yeah. obviously for doing gigs, you expect a load of rehearsal. Yeah. But rehearsals must have been really difficult to do for the number of, um, <laughs> for, you know, for the live gigs that you have been able to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we very, very rarely rehearse anyway. So So these songs have taken shape by me coming up with a basic chord sequence, sending them to Marcus. Marcus mm. kind of refining it writing melodies to it lyrics sending it back um so it's kind of like ping pong but mm. with with songs and at the end of it we're coming out with some some mm. really um great songs i think yeah. yeah so what do you think you're looking at sort of another six months yeah i mean it's touring it because mm. um the last record come together which we made yeah um we planned we we that came out in January. Mm. Talk about poor timing. Mm. Um, we have forty six 
tour dates lined up to to go and um, sell copies of the album, and of course the whole lot, the whole caboodle, mm. um, disappeared because of the COVID. So uh, yeah, and the uh, the first single from it was come together. I think yeah, wasn't that's it? right. Yeah, and that was doing pretty well on on radio plays from yeah. the blues charts and things. Yeah, we got we got um, Radio Caroline picked up on it and really mm. uh, played it. Um, it's just sod's law. I mean, like yeah. so many bands, so many clubs, and so many festivals are, are in such trouble because of this COVID thing. Uh, I mean, you know, every not feeling sorry for ourselves as being musicians, but everybody is in mm. trouble with it. So, yeah. But hopefully, we'll get to the other side of this. Yeah, and at least you'll be walking out the other side of it with a new album. Yes. Yeah. Conceived and recorded in an un, in a way that you haven't. Yeah. done before which is you know moving things forward in a i don't know it must be quite satisfying to think hey we can do it even yeah, though yeah. we you know we're sort of all sort of slightly marooned from each other yeah uh, exactly you know kev's in bristol doing the drums and yeah. roger's in northampton doing the bass marcus is in london i'm in bath so we've not seen each other but all of a sudden this really or what started started on my computer as a sort of digital sort of um, you know, um, demo sort of thing. Mm. All of a sudden, has turned into this huge, great big organic mm. thing with people playing on it, and um, yeah, it's great. It's, uh, <laughs> I the suppose way forward, maybe. <laughs> I suppose as soon as the um, you know the world sort of come back to normal, then those forty six dates will be back on. Hopefully, yeah. some of them. Yeah, we've we've got quite a lot of the dates rebooked for next year. Yeah, um, just. Touch wood, I'm an yeah. optimist and hoping that it's all going to happen. So. Yeah, and back to Transylvania again. And we'll no be doubt. back to Transylvania, <laughs> I hope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I just thank you again for, for playing a sort of a smashing set? Well, thank you, and Phil, and thank you, Mags, <laughs> for having me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's, sometimes it's kind of... It's interesting going down some of the memory lane kind of areas because yeah. I think it's easy to forget that... Back in 1975, whenever it was, yeah. when we were... Who would have thought in 1975, the bloke sitting in the in the corner of the pub would end up playing massive tours in yeah. the US with Robert Plant? <laughs> I know, it's bizarre. Yeah. Isn't it? Very strange. <laughs> I still... Like I say, I used to pinch myself and think, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> You know, and it was luck. It was, it was, it was. You know, I I knew Charlie Jones, the bass player, mm. who's a really lovely guy and a friend of mine. He was um, I'd played in a band with him, and so I was very lucky. Charlie suggested me, and mm. I think the fact that I was available, uh, available, <laughs> but also that um, I wasn't sort of um, known, I think mm. helped as well. You mm. know, so um, it's just I'm just very lucky. You know, yeah, very yeah. lucky. <laughs> thanks again brilliant show oh thank you Phil well thank you and thank you both and thanks for the cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> so you've been watching Soundcheck Plus with uh, a live set a uh, solo live set from Innis Cyban. Um keep looking on our Facebook page because our next ticketed event will be with Eddie Martin another blues giant of this Ooh, area fantastic. Uh, and that will be in January so thank you very much for watching and good night. Thank you. Good night.